So in this particular lecture, I'm going to cover crawling. And the goal will be to finish uh, crawling in this lecture. But uh, in order to do that, you may have to concentrate uh, a little bit on some of the portions that we are going to discuss in this uh, chapter. So this corresponds to chapter 20 of your book, sections 1 to 2, so 20.1 and 20.2. So you may have to pay extra attention in this lecture in order to understand the different components of the architecture of a crawler that we'll be talking about. So what is crawling? So crawling just refers to the gathering of uh, pages from the web in order to create the corpus that will be indexed by the search engine. So if you recall uh, chapters 1 to 4, we discussed that index construction pipeline right, which had uh, a bunch of documents that had to be indexed at the very top and then we had steps like tokenization linguistic pre-processing and then index construction before the index was created. So we are at the very top now for this lecture and we are asking the question how did we get all the documents that had to be indexed? And the answer is that a search engine must crawl the documents that it wants to index and that's what we are going to talk about. Now it's not necessary that every IR system will resort to crawling. For example, if you want to build an engine to a search engine on the documents that are in your uh, on on your machine, for example, on your PC, for example, desktop search uh, is an IR system that allows you to search for files on your machine based on terms that are contained in the file. So, in order to build a desktop search system, you don't have to crawl because all your files are already available on the hard disk of your machine. So you just have to uh, traverse your file system in order to locate which documents are there on your hard disk and what their contents are. Whereas a search engine must go out and actually crawl all the documents. So a crawler is sometimes also called a spider and it's sometimes also called a robot. Okay, so that's these are some terms you may want to keep in mind a crawler is also called a spider because you know just like a spider uh, traverses its web a crawler goes out and traverses the world wide web and fetches documents sometimes it's called a robot okay. so how does a crawler work at a very very high level a crawler begins with a bunch of seed URLs. So these are URLs that you know to be very authoritative. For example, it could be a URL like mit.edu or uh, cnn.com, cisco.com and so on. So these are some uh, uh, authoritative seed URLs with which the crawler begins. And then what the crawler does is it fetches the documents corresponding to each of the seed URLs and parses them. And as it parses the documents, it's going to extract the links that are in these documents. And it will place these links into a queue. And then it's going to repeat this step again. It's going to, uh, so imagine starting off with a queue which contains these seed URLs. Okay, so imagine that the queue is initialized with the URLs of these seed pages. And what you're doing is you're going, you're performing one iteration after another. And in each iteration, you are picking a URL from the queue. Then you're fetching and parsing the page corresponding to that URL. And as you parse the page, you're extracting the links, the URLs that are embedded in the uh, page that you just, you're just parsing. And then you take those URLs in the page and then you add them back to the queue. 
So if this was literally implemented as a queue, this would correspond to what sort of traversal of a graph? Have you uh, have you done breadth first search or depth first search in your data structures course? Yes, sir. We have done. Yeah. So what what sort of search would this correspond to? So if you imagine the web as a graph and let's say you these seed URLs are the locations from which you're starting to visit the graph. Basically each node corresponds to a document in the graph and you're following the links from one document to the other which is analogous to moving from one node to all the other nodes that are link that are linked to by this document. So what sort of traversal would this be if you were to literally use a queue data structure in order to uh, traverse this graph? Of course, here we, we are not starting from a single source. So in your graph traversal algorithms, you start from a single source. Here we have a collection of seed URLs. So there are like multiple sources from which you're starting. But roughly, what sort of traversal is this? Is this breadth first search or is it depth first search? Yes, anyone? Uh, Sir, uh, is it uh, depth first search, DFS? It's actually BFS because breadth first search uses a queue. Yeah, breadth first search uses a queue, whereas depth first search uses a stack. Okay, so if you add the nodes that you are seeing into a queue, then you're going to process them in first in, first out order. Right? Whereas if you insert a bunch of elements in the stack and also pop them, you'll be accessing them in a last in, first out order. So what happens in a queue is, if you're starting from a node and you visit three of the uh, neighboring documents from it, initially your queue will just have this document number one. Then you pull it out and then you add two, three, and four to your queue. Okay, so the head of the queue becomes two now. And then you will visit pages five, six, and seven, which could be adjacent to queue. And as, so you're going to pop two here and you're going to visit the pages that are adjacent to two that you have not yet visited. So those are five, six, and seven. And then you'll add five, six, and seven to your uh, queue and you will delete two from the queue. So every time you delete from the queue, you're deleting from the front, whereas every time you're inserting into the queue, you're inserting into the back. So next, you'll visit three. Okay, because three is the next element in the queue. Then you'll pop out three and then visit the pages that are adjacent to it. Let's say eight and nine. So eight and nine will go here and you've popped three. Then you'll visit four and visit the vertices that are adjacent to four. So you can see that you are visiting the graph in breadth first order, right? Not depth first. Now, it turns out that we don't actually literally use a queue uh, for traversing the World Wide Web for reasons that I'll just explain. But roughly, if we had to use a queue, uh, literally, then it would correspond to BFS. So this is just something to help you revise uh, what you did in graph traversal. But we're not going to be literally doing BFS as far as crawling is concerned. So that's what we do. And what will be the set of URLs that we will have at the end? They're all the URLs that can be visited starting from any of the seed URLs. So if there is a path from any of the seed URLs to a vertex V, sooner or later we are going to visit vertex V. So obviously this assumes that the whole 
web is connected to you know it's it's kind of connected such that if we start from these seed urls we'll be able to traverse the whole web now it's not necessary that we want to traverse the whole web because many of the pages may simply be junk and not even worth uh, indexing so we will obviously prioritize uh, by saying that these seed urls have to be authoritative pages Okay, so as we are crawling, here's a snapshot of, uh, you know, where we could be in the middle of the crawling task. So what you see here is a spider. It's a spider that uh, starts from these seed pages. So this whole universe of uh, elements here is the documents in the World Wide Web. And this small subset is the set of seed pages. Now you're going to start traversing out of these and you will have a bunch of URLs that you would have already crawled and parsed. Okay, and then from those pages in turn you would have other pages that you may not actually have already crawled or parsed but which may be lying in the queue. So this particular region which is labeled as URLs frontier is the set of URLs that are in the queue. So those are URLs that you have detected from other pages but you have not actually gone and fetched them and parsed their contents. What you've, what you've done is you've parsed the uh, documents that are in this particular region. And then this is the unseen part of the web which you, are, which you don't even know about at this stage at least. So remember this that the URLs frontier is the a set of pages which are yet to be fetched okay, which, but which you know about because they, ha they are linked to by these pages. So here's, um, here's one of the reasons why here are some reasons why this is a very simplistic picture and the rest of the lecture is going to be about the more complex version of crawling. 